Welcome to another unique items guide for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Last year I've already shown you a list of 15 unique items which have so incredible engravings that you cannot get them from blacksmith or looting. And today I have a whole list of 20 new items for you. Some of them I've already used in some of my recent builds, but today I will show you the full list. So what makes a unique weapon unique, you may ask? Well, there are certain restrictions on engravings. Not every engraving can be put on every item. So for example, when you open your inventory and go to the engraving menu, then you can see a list of possible engraving for every item type. You can check what's possible to engrave on your head, on your arms, on your torso and so on. And only these engravings can be found from looting or at blacksmiths. But there are some items that break these rules. You can get them mostly from missions or even from the store or from mercenaries. But the problem is, you probably have this mental them because most of them are only epic items but in fact they are really powerful ones and you should have kept them. So in this video I will guide you through all the locations, through all the items so that you don't miss them again and that you don't dismantle them again. The first item is probably the best bow for warriors and assassin you can get. The hunters have their oaken bow of chambers but warriors and assassin need their bandit bow. The bandit bow can be found at the weekly purples from the oikos of olympians or when you try your luck with the olympian gifts. The bandit bow has assassin damage, crit chance and crit damage. So it is only one of two purple items in the game that have crit damage on a bow. And it also has crit chance so that you have room for another legendary engraving on that bow. Which makes it really awesome when you want a warrior or assassin build. For warrior build you can use the assassin damage conversion like I did in the 2020 warrior build. That bow would fit really well in that kind of build. Another item that you can get from the Olympian gifts or from the weekly purples of the Oikos of the Olympians is the Dark Steel Mask. The Dark Steel Mask is the only helmet in the game with 100% crit damage while full health. And it also has Hunter damage primary and all damage additionally, which makes it the best helmet for a Hunter build you can get. The third item is not exactly from the Oikos, but from the weekly mercenary quest. From time to time the mercenary called Oxesia, the spawn of chaos, will roam around in Greece for a whole week. Normally the weekly mercenaries do not drop anything special. They are mostly random items which they drop, but one is really outstanding. The Oxesia's Helm of Darkness has warrior damage, melee resistance and damage with daggers. That makes it the only helmet in the game with melee resistance. And with that helmet you can complete 100% melee resistance in any kind of build. If you put additional melee resistance on the arms, on the belt and in your mastery points you can achieve 100% invincibility to all melee attacks. So if you don't have the Spartan Javelin yet, that is also an option without doing a new game plus to get 100% melee resistance. There's a total of 21 mercenaries in the game, so it will take 42 weeks for all of them to return. Every two weeks there will be another mercenary. So just look at your contract and check out on which position in the list you are and then you will know when the Oxesa's Helm will return. Sometimes there will also events when the mercenaries will return in a daily cycle, so that could speed up things for you. On the island of Salamis, in the ruined sanctuary of Ajax, there's waiting a real treasure for you. It's actually not in the big epic chest, but in a smaller one on the side behind the column, so you have to walk around and open that small chest as well. And it contains a Persian waistband. The Persian waistband is the only belt in the game with 50% crit damage. 50% crit damage sounds pretty normal for a belt, but it is not. No other belt in the game will have 50% crit damage on it. It's only possible to have 100% crit damage on it, but with this belt you can do it both. So when you are able to get your crit chance otherwise, then you can use the 150% crit damage belt in an assassin build. Item number 5 can be found in the second to last Alcibiades quest called Across the Border. It requires you to escort one of Alcibiades friends into the sanctuary of Eloises. Watch out for the ambush and after a short ride you will be awarded with the Tiny Blade. The Tiny Blade has assassin damage, damage of daggers and crit chance. But sadly it's not full health, it's low health. It would be such an awesome item if it was full health so you can just dismantle it. But take a look at the text here at the bottom. I would not expect it something different from Alcibiades here. Item number 6 is actually not a unique weapon, but many people are looking for a perfect warrior sword and the A Friend in Need quest in Attica fulfills this desire. Accept the quest from Hitor, bring back his sword from the nearby fort, lie to him that you lost it or that you sold it and then you will keep the sword to yourself. That sword has warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords. 
This is a perfect combination, the best possible combination for sword players. Item number 7 is also not a real unique weapon, but is an easy missable legendary item from a very small side quest in the game. It's part of the Hippocrates quest line, and once you are done with chapter 5 of the main story, you can find him here in the city of Thebes in Boetia, near the temple in the north. There's a quest called the Hunting Party, where you first have to kill a bear, and then Hippocrates will give you another quest called Let My Patients Go. There you have to free some of his patients from the Melanippus camp nearby and after you finish both of these quests you will be awarded with the Hermes Curicaeon. There's nothing really special about that legendary weapon but many players are missing it. After you got the Hermes Curicaeon from Hippocrates there will be even more quests you can do for him. He will be waiting south of the leader house in Thebes and then you get a quest called too much of a good thing. You will be ordered to collect some medicine for another patient and then you can choose if you make an overdose or if you just give him the correct ration of this medicine. No matter what you do, you will be awarded with the physician's helmet. The physician's helmet has warrior damage and health, but if you want health on your helmet then you better go for the wolf's helmet which is an epic, it has an additional engraving and is much better than that one. Item number 9 can be found in focus, the questline starts with helping a healer. There's a couple of quests you have to complete and when you reach the quest Sins of the Past you will be awarded with the Traveler's Pouches. The Traveler's Pouches have warrior damage and damage on animals. Having damage on animals is unique but it's not really good, so you are better off dismantling it anyway. Items number 10 to 12 are 3 incredible helix store items. First of all the arms of the swings, the only bracers in the game with bow charging speed. With the help of these bracers you can achieve 100% bow charging speed which are instant charge shots. So then you can make an instant charge hunter build. I also used it in the hyper build to achieve my instant charge shots. Since the devastating shot, which is probably the best hunter ability in the game, is depending on your state of charge, 100% bow charging speed and devastating shot is a really deadly combination. The second helix door item is the belt of the Sphinx, which is the only belt in the game with 20% crit chance while full health. So when you use both items in combination, you lose on 10% from the crit chance on the arms of the swings, but then you can get it back by using the belt of the swings. So that is a really good synergy between these two items. The third helix door item is probably the best item in the game, the bighorn bow. The bighorn bow is only a rare item, but it has a bug. The bighorn bow adds its 6495 damage to your left melee weapon DPS. So in fact it increases your left melee weapon damage by a factor of 1.6. And that can be millions of damage if you do it correctly. So when you deal 1 million with a left weapon melee strike and you equip the bighorn bow, you will suddenly deal 1.6 million. Of course it depends on the damage you actually deal. The increase is 1.6. And that's not the only thing, because the bighorn bow is also using the increased warrior damage as your hunter damage. So you can get an incredible big amount of hunter damage when you use the bighorn bow. I've already made a couple of videos about this glitch, including three builds that use it. The god mode build, the hyper build and the 26 million glitch warrior build. Make sure to check them out. The chances of this being fixed is probably 50-50. They would require to make a new version for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I don't think is very likely, but you never know. But I think it will still be around for a while. Item number 13 can be found in Messara on the island of Crete. There's a quest called Fang for your bug. Everything you have to do to get the next item is sell some fangs from dangerous animals to the vendor and he will be giving you the Aris Bow of Slaughter. The Aris Bow of Slaughter has hunter damage and crit damage. It is one of four bows in the game with crit damage on it, but sadly it's the weakest one. But if you don't have the Oaken Bow of Chambers yet, that can be a good replacement in the meantime. Items number 14 to 16 can all be found on the island of Lesbos. The first one is in Eresos. There is a quest called the son of a fisherman. In that quest you have to discover the dead body of the son of the fisherman in the nearby lake. Only if you lie to the dead that his son is not dead and he just ran away then he will be giving you the Lesbos sandals. The Lesbos sandals have warrior damage and total armor. Having total armor on boots is unique, you can normally not engrave that, but I would prefer to go for resistances. The quest for item number 15 also starts in Eresos. It is called waiting for Galernos. 
In that quest, you have to explore the seaside cavern and rescue Galeanos from the followers of Ares. Once you escape the cave, he will be giving you the Archer's Maze. The Archer's Maze is a really interesting item. It has hunter damage and damage with bow charge shot. So normally, such things as bow charging speed or damage with bow charge shot cannot be engraved on melee weapons. So this is a really good hunter melee weapon. But sadly, it's a rare one, so you are better off using epic items instead. Item number 16 is on the other side of Lesbos in the city of Mytilene. There's a quest called Revenge of the Wolf. There's a wife desperately calling for help to find her husband. You have to jump in, rescue him from the wolf he wanted to slay and you will be rewarded with the Wolf Slayer Helmet. The Wolf Slayer Helmet has warrior damage and damage with animals. That is a unique engraving for helmets but since all damage versus enemy groups are bad engravings you are just fine with throwing it away. Item number 17 is awarded when you complete the Kings of Sparta quest where you have to kill the Spartan traitor, the weapon racks in the marble quarry and defeat the Cryptea members and other things. If you manage to get into the throne room and get your audience you will be awarded with the Regal Greaves. The Regal Greaves are actually a complete copy of the Lesbos sandals with warrior damage and total armor. Continue the main story forward into Arcadia. There's a quest line called Judge, Jury and Executioner. Make sure that you complete all the support quests for this quest line. One of the support quests is White Lies and Blackmail. You have to search the safe house of the Archon to find some proof that he is a cultist. Then follow the enemies to the Scorched Tree. There are a lot of cultists around and one of it will drop the Arcadia's Mark torso. This is a unique torso with assassin damage and damage to Athenians. Normally you cannot have damage to Athenians on torsos. The last two items I want to show you are actually not unique weapons but they are the best two legendary weapons in the game and they are really hard to find. The first one is the Falks of Olympus. The Falks of Olympus can be found north of Terra in an underwater location that is really really deep. There's a legendary chest and you get the 100% damage but health cap to 25% engraving from that item. And then you can use that engraving on all other items as well. It is a really powerful engraving that boosts your damage a lot, especially in early levels, but it also reduces your health a bit, so you may be forced to play a little bit more stealthy with it. And the last one is the Atlantean Blades, which is a legendary dagger that unlocks the armor penetration engraving. It can be found at the very end of the Phidias questline. You have to locate all the engravings on three statues across Greece, and then you get the puzzle code for the cultist ruin on Lemnos which unlocks a hidden room. In that room there's only a chest which contains the Atlantean blades. 30% armor penetration is around as good as the 100% damage increase from the Fikes from the previous item but it does not reduce your health. So especially for hunter and warrior armor penetration is a must have engraving and I've used it in all of my builds. So that's it. I hope we have now covered each and every unique weapon in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So I hope you never mind that I added some other weapons here in that video too. But I wanted to make sure that even new players do not miss out on these good items. Make sure you also check out the first episode with the first 15 weapons. I will put a hard link here at the end. And please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.